Hey, Carson Bible Church. It is Wednesday and it's time for our prayer meeting devotional. Uh, we are continuing in Psalm 119. We are getting down towards the end of it. Uh, today is the second to last stanza in Psalm 119. We're working through verses 161 to 168. Now I'll go ahead and read our passage. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous rules. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Uh, as we had mentioned previously, that as we uh, start to wind down to the end of Psalm uh, 119, um, as much as the psalmist's focus has been on uh, God's word, on God's law, and how much he loves and delights in it, uh, we've also seen this uh, second theme uh, come up, which is um, his pleas to God uh, for rescue from those who are uh, threatening him or oppressing him or uh, persecuting him. And uh, as we get towards the end, it seems that those cries to God are becoming uh, more and more uh, urgent, more and more desperate. Um, and yet we still see uh, his uh, complete love and focus and devotion uh, to God's word. Um, that really kind of continues in this second to last stanza as well. Um, and I think uh, there's really kind of four things that we see here. Um, and it really shows, um, I think, a balanced life um, in uh, this example of the psalmist. We just see um, how he is holding his um, uh, uh, the, the tensions of his uh, present danger in his situation and also um, in just his uh, devotion in his faith and his love towards God um, and how he um, just really has a um, just a balanced uh, perspective of uh, those things in his life. So I think, uh, first of all, we see uh, that he has uh, faith in the midst of fear. Uh, so verse uh, 161 here, it begins and says, princes persecute me without cause. Um, and I think that's important. It's not just uh, neighbors or uh, just some uh, random enemy, some random person who doesn't like him. It's princes. Uh, so it really seems to be uh, that those who are after him, those who are threatening him, um, are people in positions of power. Uh, in authority, uh, probably uh, wealthy, probably very influential, and uh, very likely could cause him uh, great harm. And uh, I imagine that that would uh, cause uh, a great amount of fear. And uh, yet he says, uh, but my heart stands in awe of your words. And so um, even in the midst of fear, and uh, threats by uh, very influential and powerful people. He is still, uh, has his heart completely focused on, uh, on God. And that really continues into the second thing uh, that I think is important here is that we see that he uh, is offering praise even in the midst of peril. Um, I know a lot of times when we find ourselves in difficult situations, uh, we want God first to uh, remove us from the situation or uh, make that danger go away, and then we will offer him praise. But uh, here, um, just right here in the next verse, he says, I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. And then uh, a couple verses later in 164, he says, seven times a day, I praise you for your righteous rules. Um, I don't think uh, that he is using the term seven times a day is necessarily a prescription for us uh, that we need to uh, specifically pray seven times a day or uh, sing a praise song to God seven times a day, but the number seven is a number of completion and fullness. And uh, so I think it really is pointing to uh, the, the consistency, uh, his constant prayer and worship and praise of God and uh, just how uh, complete and full 
his uh, life of devotion and uh, praise to God is. So even in the midst of this uh, oppression and danger and peril, he is still living out a life of praise. I think the third thing that we see is that he still has love in the midst of loathing. Uh, it says, I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Um, and I think uh, that's really interesting because uh, we don't like to hear people in the Bible say that they hate uh, things or that they hate people. Um, and, and I think it's important to notice that the things that he hates is falsehood um, and that is because what he loves is truth. And of course, truth, uh, perfect truth is found only in God and in God's word. And so, and I think it's also important for us to notice that uh, though in other places he may have said that he hates uh, evildoers and the wicked, um, maybe even those who are threatening him and persecuting him, um, it doesn't drive him to uh, respond to them in the same way that they are threatening violence on him. Uh, he, he doesn't uh, strike back in the way that uh, they're threatening to strike him. Uh, he, the, the, his hatred of falsehood actually drives him to find truth. It drives him towards the truth which he finds in God and in God's word. And uh, so, and, and of course, uh, we remember that God's word um, uh, tells us that we need to love our enemies. We need to bless those who persecute us. Um, and so as we uh, cultivate uh, love for God's word and for God himself in our uh, prayer lives and our devotional lives and in our time of praise. Um, it also uh, drives us uh, not to uh, respond with violence when we're threatened with violence, but it uh, drives us uh, deeper and closer to God himself and uh, drives us to continue to love our enemies and to, to pray for them. And then I think finally, uh, really kind of uh, summarizes uh, all the rest of um, this stanza in the psalm is that we see that he is uh, still walking even in the midst of waiting. Um, in verse 166, he says, I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and testimonies for all my ways are before you. Um, and uh, also, uh, uh, a verse earlier, uh, it says, Grant great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. Uh, as he is continuing to walk, uh, he knows that he will not stumble because uh, God's peace and his truth will uh, keep him and protect his path as he waits on God's salvation. Um, there's no demand uh, for uh, God to uh, completely eliminate uh, any dangers in his situation. He is just waiting on God's salvation. Um, it is more important for uh, the psalmist here to know that God is with him in the midst of uh, his trials and tribulations and difficulties than it is for God to remove him from those situations. And so uh, he continues to uh, have faith. He continues to praise God and he continues to love the truth of God's word and of God himself as he continues to walk even in the midst of waiting on God's rescue and God's salvation for him. Uh, if you find uh, yourself in a time of waiting, if you find uh, that you feel like you are in uh, peril, if you are living in a time where you might be paralyzed by fear, I uh, hope that you uh, find encouragement in uh, the words of the psalmist here and that uh, you would uh, find a great love for God and for his word, uh, e even in the midst of uh, loathing those who may uh, be attempting to uh, do you harm, um, and that you would continue to offer praise in the midst of peril, and that you would continue to have faith even in the midst of fear, and uh, ultimately that we would all just continue uh, walking in the way of truth as we uh, wait on God's answers to our concerns. I hope that you find some encouragement there this evening. I hope that you're able to spend some time at home uh, in prayer uh, with your families as you meditate further on this passage of scripture. We'll see you soon. God bless you.